Hey, welcome back to the Here's the Deal channel. Now I have the American flag waving behind me because the American flag is supposed to represent something. I could have the North Korean flag waving behind me or the Chinese flag waving behind me, but no, I have the American flag waving behind me because it's supposed to represent, gosh, what is it supposed to represent? Oh, that's right, freedom, freedom. It's supposed to represent the land of the free and home of the brave. And yet in this land, there are two more people who are in federal prison right now and will probably be there for a long, long time unless we, the people, do something. Now, what are we gonna do? I'm not sure. But I know at least one of those guys has a wife and a couple kids who aren't gonna see their dad or their husband for a long, long time unless something is done. So my question as I start this video is, is this the land of the free? Is this the home of the brave? The story that I'm talking about centers around this guy right here, CRS Firearms. And the way I found out about it was through my last video in the comments section, the reindeer sent me a message and said, hey, Brian, we got to help Matt from CRS Firearms. He was just found guilty. Please do a video. Much love. Thanks, brother. And I was like, well, how can we help him? And here's what he said before we even get into the article and before we find out what the Justice Department said, about Matt from CRS Firearms. The reindeer says, I think the issue is much larger than Matt going to prison for a long time. He could, Matt could potentially go to prison for 45 years and the other guy who had this website, and I'll show you, I'll show you what their crime was. The other guy could go to jail for 110 years. So he says, here's a man who took a risk to publicly stand against ridiculous policies that were created by and enforced by a government agency that had no authority to make laws in the first place. And because he took that stand against their authority, they decided to make an example out of him in an attempt to flex their muscle and further scare people into submission. That's what the government is good at. This whole thing was over him promoting a novelty item. We'll look at that item in a second. Now his wife and kids will have to struggle without him for years to come and think about what happens to the fabric of society when you have home after home after home without a father. What ends up happening to those children? What are the ramifications of removing the head of the house? We know the answer to that question. And not because the little piece of metal he promoted was dangerous in any way, but because Matt promoted knowledge. And truly, that's what this is about. It's about the promotion of of knowledge. He shared knowledge that the ATF and other career criminal extortionist agencies did not want the people to have access to. It's this knowledge that caused the government to fear the very people who fund their ability to hold power in the first place and secure the same monopoly on violence and force that put Matt behind bars. That reindeer, that was well, well put and well written. In my opinion, it feels like something worth talking about. I totally agree. So what did Matt do? Who, who are the two key players in this? Well, according to the Justice Department, and this is the website, justice.gov, says federal jury convicts two men for conspiring to, did they harm somebody? Did they threaten to harm somebody? Did they damage property and not pay for it? Were they forcing people and coercing people to do things that people didn't want to do? Nope. What were they doing? They were promoting this item right here. It's called an auto key card. So the Justice Department says, uh, so these guys are convicted of conspiring to transfer unregistered machine gun conversion devices. That's what they're calling this right here. A machine gun conversion device. It's called an auto key card dis disguised as pen holders. So I want to read this a part of this article right here. Here's the guy right here from CRS Firearms. He's 29 or 30 years old and he's facing a 45 year prison sentence for having done nothing but do something the politicians said not to do back in 1934. And actually, it's not even that. It's not even that. It's not even that. According to the lawyers of this guy right here, this is Matt from CRS Firearms. According to his lawyers, there wasn't anything that any specific law that's been cited that he violated, according to them. So in this article right here, it says jurors found an Orange Park business owner guilty on all counts in a federal trial about marketing thousands of illegal machine gun conversion devices through a web-based company advertising on YouTube. So this guy from autokeycard.com was making them and the YouTuber, and basically he was sponsoring this YouTuber, Matt, from CRS Firearms to promote it, which Matt did. 
the Wisconsin gun dealer whose gun centered YouTube channel has 180,000 subscribers. That's CRS firearms right here was convicted of conspiracy with auto key card owner, Justin Irvin, as well as four counts of transferring the unregistered devices. Gun dealer Matthew Hoover, known to many enthusiasts through his CRS Firearms channel, was taken into custody by U.S. Marshals after the verdict was returned on Friday. Irving has been behind bars since his arrest. It was sometime in March of 2021. You could say that, hey, anybody who's got a YouTube channel that's, that, that, sh that promotes any kind of information like you see on the screen right here. And by the way, this kind of information, I just pulled up, I just typed in Lightning Link, which is what they're calling this, auto key card, Lightning Link, whatever. Supposedly, this device, this, this little piece right here can transfer a semi-automatic into a fully automatic firearm. And so... The ATF is saying, that's what this is. This is, this key card is a conversion device. And that's what they got him on. So because both men were involved in it, both men got indicted. And then both men, you know, were declared by a jury. What's wrong with you, jury? What's wrong with you? Uh, being guilty on all counts. Irving sold card-shaped strips of stainless steel etched with patterns for equipment colloquially called a lightning link that can convert a semi-automatic AR-15 rifle into a fully automatic machine gun that fires round upon round from a single trigger pull. Although a buyer would have to follow the etched lines with a cutting tool, prosecutors argued that the cards qualified as conversion devices, which the federal government treats like machine guns. So they treat this card right here as though it were an actual machine gun. Tell me, tell me if that, tell me if you think in the comment section, tell me if you think that's crazy, just a little bit on the crazy side, a little bit of insanity there, a little, uh, little, uh, Hey, we need uh, a straight jacket and some padded cells for this guy. Who's thinking along these lines that have to be registered and regulated under the National Firearms Act of 1934, which in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of people, criminalizes people who haven't committed crimes. Is it truly a crime to disobey the laws or rules or edicts or words of politicians? Is it really? Defense attorneys argue the firearms law doesn't cover their clients because it doesn't restrict items that could potentially be made into conversion devices but haven't been yet. So here's what the Justice Department says. And this is pretty interesting because this goes into way more stuff than just, you know, illegal firearms and firearm components. The United States Attorney Robert B. Hanberg announces that a federal jury today found this guy, Irvin and Hoover. Oh, I guess I guess Hoover's uh, 39. I thought he was 30. I thought he was 29 guilty of conspiring to transfer unregistered machine gun conversion devices as they referred to as key cards. Additionally, Irving was convicted of seven counts of transferring unregistered machine gun conversion devices, three counts of possessing unregistered machine gun conversion devices, and one count of structuring cash transactions to avoid currency transaction reporting requirements. This Irving guy, he got reported to the ATF by his bank. Irving faces a maximum penalty of 110 years, Hoover faces 45 years in federal prison and it talks about the sentencing. According to the testimony evidence presented at trial in January 2021, Irvin's bank contacted the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives to report that employees believed that Irvin was trafficking in machine gun conversion devices. Subsequent investigation revealed that Irvin was running an online business selling machine gun conversion devices known as lightning links etched into metal cards, which he referred to as auto key cards. Irvin described the auto key card as a pen holder, a novelty and a political sculpture. A lightning link can be dropped into an otherwise legal AR-15 type firearm and convert it into a fully automatic machine gun. This is again, this is what we're talking about right here. And that's why Rabbit was saying basically what he's been convicted of, basically what he's been found guilty of is transferring information that the government didn't want transferred. And that should alarm every one of us. In February 2021, federal agents from ATF and U.S. Postal Inspection Services surveilled Irvin. They're keeping an eye on you as though this were North Korea. Here, let's fly the North Korea flag again. There we go. There we go. Ah, uh, now, now, don't we feel better? At least we feel more consistent, right? It's more consistent if we fly this flag or this flag because we can't, we can't in actuality fly this flag because this right here is supposed to symbolize freedom and I'm not seeing any freedom right here. Are you guys seeing any freedom? Tell me if you see, see freedom. 
surveilled Irvin and observed him dropping off dozens of packages at an Orange Park, Florida post office, each of which was determined to contain unregistered machine gun conversion devices. The ATF exam, and, and now this is coming from the government, so you take it with a grain of salt whether you want to believe this or not. The ATF examined the auto key cards and a firearms enforcement officer was able to remove the pieces of the lightning link from the auto key card using a common Dremel rotary tool in about 40 minutes. When the firearms enforcement officer placed the two pieces of the lightning link into an AR-15 type firearm, it converted the semi-automatic firearm to be fully automatic. Now, I've heard stories that people were reading other reports where they tried and they tried and they failed and they failed and then it jammed the gun. Now, I don't, I have not verified that, but I'm hearing from pretty good sources that they made this sound way easier than it actually was. Hoover operated a YouTube channel called CRS Firearms on which he advertised auto key cards. In his videos, Hoover stated that, quote, laws only work if we follow them and encouraged his viewers to, quote, use discreet ordering by mail to purchase auto key cards. Hoover stated that his viewers could cut a lightning link out of the auto key card, quote, drop it in your receiver, scratch your full auto itch, throw it away when you're done, and no one's the wiser. Again, was anybody harmed? Was anybody threatened? Was anybody's life put in jeopardy? Was anybody's property stolen or damaged and they didn't offer to pay for it? Was anybody coerced or threatened or forced into do something that they didn't want to do? The answer to all those questions is no. Hoover's videos advertising the auto key card led to a substantial increase in Irving's sales. Irving sold more than 2,000 auto key cards in only a few months. Multiple purchasers of the auto key card testified at trial. So does that make them guilty of possessing a conversion device, which will make a semi-auto into a fully auto? Are they guilty? Are they going to track down all 2,000 customers who bought this and take them to federal jail for violating the 1934 National Firearms Act? Multiple purchasers of the auto key card testified at trial that they had learned about it from Hoover's videos and purchased the auto key card intending to use it to convert their AR-15 type weapons into machine guns. Irvin compensated Hoover for his advertisements by sending cash through the mail and on one occasion, a Louis Vuitton purse. In March 2021, federal agents executed a search warrant in Irvin's home and recovered auto key cards containing etchings for more than 1,500 lightning links, the criminals that they are. So just to be clear, CRS Firearms is in jail right now and might stay in jail for 45 years, not because he harmed another fellow human being, but because he transferred information that the government didn't want him to transfer. The startling thing about this whole thing is not just that two men went to jail for having harmed no one. The startling thing is they could do the same thing to you and I tonight if they wanted to. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you think of a way we can help CRS Firearms, let me know, leave a comment. I'll see you in the next video.